morning. So this is the session of uh, finding Chilliwack's Fallen. Uh, my name is Gary Mitchell and I'm past president of the BC Historical Federation. So I really appreciate you uh, got up early this morning and come and spend this time before the AGM. And I'd like to introduce uh, our speaker, Paul Hurts. Now, as you know, Paul has an interest in military and home front history. I was kindled as a youth while he was living overseas and in other parts of our great country. He's worked for museums, archives, and has advised on many research projects, exhibitions, publications. And his exploration of conflict sites has greatly influenced his research and his methodology. No wonder he was standing alongside a great war trench or atop a bridge at Gallipoli or Marvin upon the Grand Harbor at Malta. And he used these experiences to develop successful interpretations of our difficult paths. Among these now quiet landscapes of chaos, Paul has sharpened his instincts as an observer of history in search of imagery and voice. He is the former curator here at Chilliwack and, and is currently an associate registrar with the Royal Bridge Company Museum in Victoria. Now, Paul is going to speak for 45 minutes and we should have time for questions now. So please give a big Chilliwack welcome to Mr. Hurst. Also identified 
or individuals on the War Memorial where they lived in Chilliwack, which is really interesting. So I would encourage you to, if you want more information, go there. I'll be available for questions afterwards. I've been working on military history, not just in Chilliwack. I've been, I was here for 21 years, but I've been working on military history for 40 years. Largely because of what I encountered when I was a youth. I saw a lot of interesting things just out. This was about 1964 to 67 overseas. And when I came back to Nova Scotia first, then to BC, I was really surprised by the lack of interest in all things military. It was quite a surprise. And being the son of a sergeant, who of course ran the Canadian Army, according to my dad, <laughs> uh, it was a huge oversight. So I just dug in. And so today we're going to talk about the story of Chilliwack's War Memorial through research, imagery, voice, chants, and observation. I always like those kind of sentences. I write them out, I send them out to the BC Historical Federation, and then I promptly forget about them. <laughs> this time I put it up as the number one slide so that I could, uh, I could uh, remember what I was talking about as we go along. I'm scared to approach this thing. <laughs> Try bringing the mic up higher, I don't know. Okay, Mike. It's partly also the speaker location you see, Mike. I see. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. 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 Do you want to use the microphone? Just throw the other one? No, if you can hear me, I'll just talk. I'm still like a voice like a sergeant major, so we'll just go with that. You're good? Yeah. Can you hold the mic? No, I don't, I'm not mic now. You can't hear me? Yeah. Move forward. It's not church. Well, you know, I was at a rock concert in Victoria. Kid Mitchell, I don't know if any of you are familiar with him. Really loud, great guy. Standing at Windspear Center, playing away, having a great time. Took one look at the crowd. The seats were 35 feet in front of the stage. And he said, this is a rock concert. Everybody get up, come forward. So you guys can move forward. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. All right. Now we'll get serious. Okay, let's see what happens. Praise for what is lost. Makes it, can we turn down the lights at all? Is that possible? By the water. I'm quickly turning into a needy guy. <laughs> oh, okay, that, that works. Praising what is lost makes the remembrance dear. William Shakespeare. This is from one of his plays called All's Well That Ends Well. And I'm not sure that the uh, quote seems appropriate for this. I'm not sure that there's anything that didn't work. It ends well. So many people are left behind. So many people, you, so many people lose their lives, and then we have all the others that are left to remember. My grandmother lost her father when she was two years old. It greatly impacted her life. This was a man she barely knew, if she knew at all. And once upon a time, many years ago, when I was doing a presentation just like this, I realized that for every time she spoke about her father, she wasn't talking about what she knew of him one-on-one. -on -one. It was really just the stories that were being passed to her by her mother. That connection. And that connection from a man I never knew from a man she never really knew, went from her to my mother, to me. And that's so important. Connection, it's a huge thing. It's community. Every one of those names that's on Chilliwack War Memorial, whether they lived here or not, became part of this community, simply by adding their names to it. A lot of things went into that this project for the Great War started Probably sometime after 1994. We actually, when I was at Chilliwack Museum, we worked on the Second World War first, and then the First World War afterwards. One of the things that I did, there was no optical character recognition at that time, so you couldn't do all these keyword searches online or anything like that. I read the Chilliwack newspaper probably 25, 30, 40 times, and there was always these little snippets that you would get. You just mined it, done. And the whole time that we were doing that, we kept finding things that were interesting. So we built up all those vertical files that are in the Chilliwack archives, were built up because of research-based, well, collecting, doing things for exhibition, 
all that research really paid off. And that's something I mean, about so much really good information sitting in the Chilliwack archives. It's quite accessible. Other things that were really valuable were the online uh, Library of Archives Canada with all their service records, CDF personnel service records, which are more and more getting scanned and are online, their full capacity rather than just the front two pages. All the Canadian War Diaries are available online, and there's so much other material that you can make use of. Imagery. I travel a lot with this. I travel to a lot of sites of conflict, and anytime that and sometimes when I'm traveling with some friends, we're in and out of these sites so quick because one of my friends just wants to see 386 things. I would rather spell that down, but you, you get a choice within about 20 minutes on a site to find the picture that, that captures that moment. So I'm very interested in finding those images that I can use in my own research or to write for my uh, film company down in the States uh, for use with blogs. Voice. I'm always interested in who's talking about the following. If you go through the Chilliwack progress, uh, some of the voices that you will get is poetry from the soldiers themselves, letters home that were published in the Chilliwack progress because Thomas Caskey, who was the editor of the Chilliwack progress, he did a great job. He also lost his life in the Great War. Uh, you will get things published, published for a notices, service notices, with something submitted by the family inscriptions overseas as well that are on headstones, which Gary mentioned earlier. Chance. Their chance plays so much good fortune with them doing research. It is amazing. You can be sitting in the Chilliwack archives saying, I need to know more about this guy, and I can't find him. Like, why, why can't I find him? I think it was Colin McDonald. It doesn't make sense. We, we know this much about him. But then it turned out, when his descendants showed up, that McDonald wasn't their true family name. True family name was Fairburn. We would never have known that unless they showed up. Or when somebody else showed up saying, well, you know, G.F. Harris, you know, that, that wasn't his, no, W.F. Harris, William F. Harris, that's not his name. His first name is Will Lerma. Well, you know, you can spend a month of Sundays looking online for W.F. Harris, and we got all kinds of choices, but well, they're among them. all of a sudden you're, you're getting somewhere. Observation. Anytime that you're anywhere, whether you're at the Chilliwack War Memorial, whether you're up at Little Mountain, whether you're overseas, just looking around, seeing what's near you, because a lot of people miss stuff. You just need to be aware of all your, anything that's around you, because you can always pick up things that are useful to you. And then there's the places themselves, the places that I have visited that all of these Chilliwack soldiers were at. Eper, which is the preferred pronunciation now, not Ypres, Eper. Uh, you'll get two different versions of this spelling. This is the French version, Y-P-R-E-S. They currently, the Belgians prefer I-E-P-E-R. This is what the uh, city looked like during the Great War on the left, and how it's been rebuilt exactly as it was prior to the war. Or the song, which all, some of you will be very familiar with, Piper Richardson from Chilliwack was awarded the Victoria Cross on the song. This is a picture of German prisoners of war bringing in the wounded, and on our right, this is what, these aren't exact locations, but this is still on the song. This is by Loth Nagar Crater, uh, just down from Loth Cell, just a typical farmer's field where all these poor souls lost their lives. And, and others survived, of course. Then there's Vinny. Vinny before, Vinny now. All that crater earth filled with live ordinance as well. You, you can't walk out there at all. Passchendaele. Those are Canadian troops on the left, and those are the water fields today. Now, just with cows out. things I got to witness was going to Gallipoli, to V Beach. This is the location of the, uh, man, I got a lot of things to eat. Where's the pointer thing on this? Is it this? No, that's not good. That's <laughs> oh, that's good. Excellent. So this site here, that's this point of the rock here. 
This is the very famous ship, the River Clyde, which was there on April 25th, 1915, and unloaded the uh, one of those Royal Munster Fusiliers. This is the fort at Settle Bar, which is still standing. Doesn't quite look that good these days. Uh, just an amazing place to visit. Absolutely stunning. I would highly recommend going there. Go with an organized tour. Uh, and it's a little difficult right now. Um, one of the things that I've always thought about when I was overseas is how similar, I mean, despite the mountains here in Chilliwack, the farmer's fields that we walk. I'm, I'm, in, I'm searching for images. This is a farmer's field, typical farmer's field in, uh, in La Boiselle in France. And there's a Chilliwack farmer's field. The difference? Pieces of live ordnance in fields in France. They pull out an astonishing amount of tonnage every year from the fields. Then there's the hurt out of these soldiers from Chilliwack. Because all, all 99 of the individuals on Chilliwack's War Memorial, they're all soldiers. There's no airmen, there are no sailors, well, there there's sort of one sailor. Uh, and there's no, there's no airmen at all. They were injured by shrapnel. These are from projectiles that are carrying sh shrapnel rounds. I can't remember how many shrapnel bolts are in one round. But they caused a tremendous amount of injury. So sometimes people, you know, they'll mention, oh, we researched a file, and we got this file on uh, dad or grandpa. And all he keeps wounded in the box. And they sort of giggle. But when the shrapnel is flying, they're lying down on the ground. They're getting hit in the back. They get hit in the posterior. And not, not very good. But that's one of the reasons that uh, they injured all these injuries or were injured like this. And there's the bullets. All these slides are taken from the In Flanders Fields Museum in Hebrew. There's hundreds upon thousands of these out in the fields. And there's some organizations that gather for the museum. Projectiles. Everything from gas, uh, high explosive, incendiary. And they find these routinely in the fields. And gas. This is a gas mask. This is the probably I guess the second type of gas mask from the Great War. So from all that chaos, all that artillery barrage, all that machine gun fire, all the loss of life, there was an organization created to try to create order from that chaos. So in about 1917, the Imperial War Graves Commission is organized to start dealing with registration of the dead. One of the things that they had to do was concentrate all the burials. Because a lot of the burials were very small, they were dispersed all over the place, bodies were exhumed, graves were concentrated. Now, in France and Flanders, the farmers, um, a lot of the graves were concentrated, but there's so many of them. There's over 3,000 graves, or cemeteries, uh, overseas. For the opposing forces, the Germans, uh, their graves were really concentrated. So if you go to a German cemetery there, you might find uh, a marker that will say there's 40,000 buried in this one spot because the French and the German uh, Belgians weren't willing to get the ground to the, to the enemy forces. All throughout the war, people were trying to have their loved ones remembered. As soon as death started occurring, people were asking, where are they buried? I don't believe they were killed. Wreaths were being sent over. This is a picture of the Women's Army and Auxiliary Corps with uh, wreaths that they're laying just after the war. And then this was the bonus in Chilliwack. Herbert Thomas Goodman is an amazing individual. He was manager of the Chilliwack Canning and Preserving Company, and I remember the day reading the Chilliwack Progress newspaper about this canning label. I was so thrilled. They described it to a T. Didn't show us a picture of it. I finally saw one about eight months ago, and it took me about seven months and 30 days to persuade them to scan for me. <laughs> but there it is. So I was really pleased to see that. It'd be really nice to get one for the Chilliwack Museum. He was also the secretary of the Chilliwack Agricultural Association, the real estate insurance with Jay Howe Ben. So a lot. I believe he was involved in development of Mountain View Subdivision and Grandview. Do you have Grandview here, I think? Uh, Secretary of the Chilliwack Board of Trade and the Alderman of the City of Victoria. He helped organize the 104th Regiment here in Chilliwack. 
He also, after he had managed to do that, he went to Alberta, was involved in the 101st Edmonton Fusiliers, was on holiday in England when war broke out. Because his two Canadian regiments were connected to the Royal Munster Fusiliers, he joined the Royal Munster Fusiliers, an Irish unit. He wound up in Gallipoli, where he took on a different kind of canning project. Uh, like all soldiers in Gallipoli, they made grenades out of jam cans, finding whatever they could to use as shrapnel, adding the fuses and then lobbing them across the lines. Gallipoli, as I said, it's an amazing place to visit. You've got to be in really good shape. In fact, our host said to us, we were standing on one of the beaches, and he said, do you know what the difference is between a, a cliff and a scramble? And then we all sat there going, well, we're standing there. No idea. He said, you can climb a scramble. We're going up that thing there. And I just was like, oh my gosh. It was unbelievable. It took me a long time to climb, because I had a really bad knee then, too. When Goodland started with the Imperial War Graves Commission in 1919, he stayed till 1928. He only had 166 graves, uh, pardon me, cemeteries that he was in charge of. When he left in 1928, he was in charge of 3,000 cemeteries and had over 1,200 staff. He eventually became the uh, Deputy Sergeant at Arms in Victoria, and he was uh, decorated by the British for his work with the War Graves Commission. There are challenges with some of the names that are on the War Memorial. As I mentioned, there's Fairburn. There are others. Private William Harris. He's in the Cheshire Regiment. That's British Army. Uh, always a challenge to, to figure out, you know, well, if you can't find somebody, usually he's probably in the British Army, maybe Australian, maybe New Zealand. But that his name is called Laramal. That was, that, 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 was uh, that opened all the doors. Uh, a. Lee is believed to be William Lee. William Lee is from Belrose. We actually know that he lost his life. And the way that the names were gathered uh, for the War Memorial left a lot of room for error, even though they asked for corrections when they were published in the progress. Sam Marie Garner served as Roy Cromarty, East First Nations. And Albert Reynolds, or A. Reynolds, as he's shown on the War Memorial, I actually believe is in error. I don't think he was actually killed. There is a soldier who was in the 104th of this name who was wounded, was published in the progress, but he didn't die. But by the way, that you know, no one had to provide proof of death to submit a name. Overseas, this is a Brooklyn military cemetery in England. Uh, this is uh, the headstone for Duncan J. Bell. This is just south of London. There's over 1,600 burials there. This is Duncan J. Bell, and I was always happy, no matter what the quality of the image, just to find an image of the guy who we were grateful for. And his headstone records, Beloved Only Son, Mr. and Mrs. Allen Bell, Chilliwack, B.C. That was so special to actually see that, to see the word Chilliwack sitting in England. It creates connection. So when people say to me, well, you know, the great war history of Chilliwack is only a local story, no, it's international. Because these places are visited. This isn't, a, it's not like it is here, where we think about it maybe once a year, or occasionally go to the cemeteries, or we go on an organized tour. They commemorate the war every day overseas. You know, when I first started going over to Ypres, uh, in Belgium, there might be a hundred of us at the last post ceremony. Uh, now, there's probably 1,500 people there every evening. Ypres is an amazing place. This is where it's located in Belgium. This is the salient. I, I've walked, I've driven in a car, I've ridden a bike all through this area. Just absolutely amazing to see. This is the front lines. This is in behind, this is the favorite uh, pop ring, also known as POP, uh, where a Talk H organization was formed, which there was a Talk H organization here in Chilliwack as well. One of the things that I wanted to do on this bike bike ride was go to Plug Street Churchyard Cemetery. Uh, this was an 18 kilometer bike ride, a uh, great little place. It was to see Private Thomas Sutton, the first casualty of the 7th Battalion CEF, along with Lieutenant Boggs, who was a neighbor, uh, a neighbor of uh, Arthur Curry, who uh, commanded the Canadians after Vimy. He lost his life in a place called Kim, 
that was changing hands on occasion. When I mentioned, you know, that there's other memorials, generally we have interest in our local memorials, but these memorials they exist for everybody. There's French memorials, there's Belgian memorials. This is the uh, memorial for the Belgian army at Plugster, just in front of the churchyard. This is Pinecott Cemetery, which is the, the most visited cemetery on the Western Front. There are busloads after busloads of tourists coming in here, and I really like this shot. This was a fine gentleman from the Staffordshire Regiment pointing things out to his daughter. Just reminiscing. Over 11,000 burials at this one site alone, where Private Colin near Chilliwack is uh, commemorated, believed to be buried in this cemetery. Tynecock's an interesting place because Tynecock was a battlefield throughout the war. So he might have been buried there, but the war continued. A lot of graves were destroyed. They know he was in there, but he's not buried at this exact location. Here's one of the German uh, pillboxes on the site. There was a bunkhouse, two pillboxes. Uh, the, pill, uh, the pillboxes were nicknamed uh, Erksen and the Barnum. And the Australians won a Victoria Cross on this site. <coughs> Listen, Hook, British Military Cemetery provided the most extraordinary story that I was able to witness related to Chilliwack. When I went looking for Corporal Walter Randolph Fletcher, there are over 9,000 burials of this and Hawk. My friend went there to see Mr. McElroy. They were side by side. 9,000 people and they were side by side. I couldn't believe it. <clears throat> Chester Farm Cemetery, Private Charles Arnold, this is also so deeper where if you step into the forested area, you will see these kinds of fortifications with uh, lush forest growth coming up over them. But then right by Chester Farm Cemetery, evidence again of the Great War, with a Stokes mortar around, just lying on top of the fence, waiting to be collected by the uh, ordinance people. This is the Men Gate Memorial to the Missing. There's over 54,000 names uh, recorded on the gate. Unveiled, it were dedicated in 1927. They host the last post ceremony there every every evening. Where, as I said, there's 1,500, 2,000 people there, and this is where the most Chilliwack soldiers are commemorated. Here's one of my favorite guys, Private Malcolm Chadsey McLeod, well-known family. Chadsey's a well-known family in this area as is McLeod. Uh, this picture came from his, I believe it was his grandson, or, or great-nephew. Uh, lost his life up around the uh, area of St. Julian during the gas attack in 1915. And he wrote the most wonderful letter that was published in the Progress about going to London, about being on the, going to the British Museum where he saw all this extraordinary stuff, Egyptian mummies, Pottery, jewelry, read the diary of Captain Scott from Antarctica, was at the opening of Parliament for uh, the UK. It, it was really great to read it. And Rosemary and I, this is a little aside, we were just in London to take some pictures for this presentation. And we were there on the day of uh, March 22nd, taking pictures for uh, Mr. McLeod. And we were there just a few hours before. The incident occurred in London, and uh, that was that, that turned into quite a day. Um, so when Mr. McLeod becomes even more important to me, this is the great Colin McDonald, true name Albert Ferber, who is commemorated as a Ferber in New Zealand on this marker, and his brother Thomas McDonald is recorded on the Bill Mountain in Chilliwack. It was his, I think it's his great niece, who also included a fair bear on the rest. You would never have known that unless they showed up. Vimy Memorial is another place where many soldiers from Chilliwack were commemorated. Quite an amazing place. Of course, they just had the 100th anniversary for Chilliwack, or pardon me, for Vimy, on site. And then Private Harry Ayers, who's commemorated on a Vimy Memorial, wrote this Amazing little bit of prose, a blaze your fire at twilight, a thousand stars in the shine, a searchlight sweeping heaven above the firing line. The rifle bullet whistles, the message that it brings, of death and desolation to common folks and kings. 
A sentry at his station upon the trenches rim, his thoughts to draw souls nearer, and you were there with him. There's one line in this that I've always liked. That is to common folks and kings. Because when you are in Ypres, you can go to the Ypres Town Cemetery, where you will see the elite buried, including uh, one of the princes, I think it's Prince Maurice, who lost his life during the Great War. And they're very near to the soldiers, the other ranks. So sometimes you'll always hear, oh, they were nowhere near. No, they were near. You think about the land of gentry, so many of them who were officers in 1914 lost their lives. Or you can take that with the Canadian Expeditionary Force, who, you know, at one time they had the capital, Montreal, was absolutely hammered by their, both the wealthy elite, their sons, who were officers. So many of them lost their lives. It changed the complexion of Montreal greatly. Hiller Station Cemetery in France is located behind the lines. It's uh, near to one of the hospital areas. This is where the most soldiers from Chilliwack are actually physically buried. Private Harris and Raymond Allen being one of them. Amazing gardening works that they, they go through over there. Turkey, here you go, Andrea. Um, are we there? Yeah. There you go. Leo Harold Grossman, one of Andrea's and Jamie's relatives. Just stunning. I, I was said to Rosemary when I was, I think I emailed her, and I said, you know, you're not going to believe what I'm doing. I'm walking on this little ridge. It's, oh, it might be as wide as this path. And you look over here, and you go, oh, that's a long way down. Oh, that's a longer way down. Where's the most bushes to run into? <laughs> Just extraordinary place. I would go again in a minute. And this is what they're fighting on. All through these ridges, up these, you, you read about them, scrambling up and down. Uh, unbelievable. And then, of course, the Turks. Really interesting. They're defending their homeland. They would sit there on a hilltop. You want this hilltop? Okay. Fight us. Yeah. Okay, we're leaving now. We're going to our next hilltop. And the British would go, oh gosh, they're over there now. Off they go to the next hilltop. It was a, just how the Turks did it. And the Turks were victorious, and they celebrated to this day. When we left there, there were 16 busloads of Turks going into Gallipoli to remember what was accomplished there. This is where Sutliff and Frank Wendell Stacy lost his life. This is the Helles Memorial at V Beach. This is that point where the River Clyde was at. Uh, he's sort of a sailor. He's in the Royal Naval Division, but he's one of the army guys who got drafted into the Royal Naval Division. He wasn't a true sailor. He didn't come off the ship. He was originally in the 72nd Seaforth Highlanders. There's over 20,000 individuals commemorated at Helles. I went there partly to take a picture of his name on the heads uh, on the memorial. However, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, as they're called now, were busy refurbishing it. It was completely fenced off. So we're going to go back. Another stunning photo. James Mercer Farm and Rose to help. Always like this photo. And, and I never worried that some people say, oh, well, he's not in uniform. I'm, that's not the point. Tilt. It's a Gord Stevenson and Albert Leslie Martin are both in that photograph. Just really great to have images uh, to use when you write their biographies. And then, you know, to visit their headstones overseas. Sigurd Stevenson lost a brother as well, Thomas, and Albert Leslie Martin was one of ten children. But you don't have to necessarily go too far. You don't go overseas to find the fallen for Chilliwack. You have the Independent Order of Odd Fellows Memorial, unveiled in 1920 at the Little Mountain. Really interesting. This must have been a factory ordered monument. This is the same monument in place as Fort Langley and at Murrayville. All the changes are these. Excuse me. This is the uh, First World War commemoration on the reverse of the Second World War. Then you have the only then Imperial War Graves Commission headstone, now Commonwealth War Graves Commission headstone for Sherman Edward Peat, right in the uh, Peat family, very good location. He died of disease in 1916. Orville Hubert Boucher, also commemorated at Vinnie. These, oh, pardon me, at the Little Mountain. 
These always really interest me. Kill the Natch that lands, which is right near Vimy. Uh, I've, I've made a record of many of these headstones from BC that record family members lost overseas. George Allen Evans, that's also a little mountain. It just says, uh, I think it says, uh, buried at Vimy, or killed at Vimy. And then this private memorial to Lieutenant Richard Arthur Henderson well-known surveyor of this area, railway engineer. The Chilliwack Museum has a few things in its collection. Dennis Peter Hepburn, there's the pocket watch uh, from the museum. He's one of three brothers who served in the CEF. He was commissioned, lost his life 3rd of November, 1918, with the 47th Battalion. Of course, there's Piper James Clayland Richardson, VC, which I'm sorry to reiterate it, but I know that the website has, has, has changed. It's the Chilliwack Museum and Archives says he lived here. No, he didn't live here. I'm sorry. He, he lived in Vancouver. He was working in Vancouver. We know that all his letters have survived. Address the Chilliwack. We know what is. I work at a film company in the States doing a documentary on Richards. And we, we actually have his address in, at home uh, in Vancouver. His bagpipes were saved. Uh, they're now on display at the legislature in uh, Victoria. Pipes will follow me till the day I take over. Anytime somebody wants them, I can ask about them, which is a good thing. Uh, Lieutenant George Edward Sellers, all the churches in the area are absolutely magnificent with things. St. Thomas comes to mind with all the things that are in there. Uh, St. John's Baptist has this lovely ewer that was given by his mother, uh, and it's down located by the baptismal font, pond, pond, pond. <laughs> In the church. It's really hard with this. <laughs> uh, the Chilliwack Methodist Church on a roll. This is the church that's directly across the street from the Chilliwack Museum. Uh, these kind of plaques exist in a lot of different buildings in town. There's an honor roll of Cook's Presbyterian, honor roll of elsewhere. In fact, your dad found an honor roll for me from Ashlitz that I thought would exist, and he found it, so I should say thank you again. These just amazing memorial windows at St. Thomas's Church that were installed in December of 1916. Just, and then, of course, the, the memorial plaques. Uh, you see these are community churches all throughout BC and in, in England. Uh, once again, there's Leo Grossman, certain person's relative. Jane, you're here. There you go. Next one. St. Thomas Anglican Church Honor Roll. This is done by uh, Walter Lee. Uh, the letter done by Mr. Andrews, Frederick Walter Lee, who's a Royal Academy artist who died uh, here in Chilliwack, sadly as a, as a pauper. He has a wonderful mark for the Oakland Little Mountain. This is a complete aside. It's just cast in cement, and his name's down the Little River Stones, FWB. Mm -hmm. Chilliwack High School Roll of Honor is sitting in the Chilliwack Museum uh, with artwork uh, done by uh, Alexander Gibson Jameson, who is the uh, Manual instruction teacher at Chilliwack High School. All the poppies by the names record someone who did not return. And of course, there's the Chilliwack War Memorial that was dedicated, unveiled April 9th, 1923. This is a well known photograph of a memorial. And what an amazing story. This is done by a photographer named Dowson, who was at the Halifax explosion in 1917 as a photographer. And he used the same camera to take this picture which was hit by shrapnel, which would be an amazing camera to find for the museum. This is the Chilliwack Memorial, the sentries posted, everybody came home together. The memorial in Chilliwack was designed by this man, George Lister Thornton Sharp, awarded the Military Cross of Bar during the Great War. He was with the 47th Battalion. He also designed the War Memorial for Vancouver, and Richmond, and the Trail War Memorial Trails a little far away. I haven't got there yet. I get overseas before I get to trail. <laughs> and then finally, Chilliwack's War Memorial. It reminds us of a common sacrifice, a common sorrow, and a common peace. Said by Reverend M. W. Holden in 1928. I think that's one of the things that I really like about the memorial anywhere. Is it provokes people to say the most amazing things. 
This one little quote I've used time and time again. In 1945, here's your second world war bit, Reverend Funston spoke at the, at the memorial, just after the dropping of the atomic bomb, and said at the memorial that that was a force that we cannot rightly comprehend. And that one little line stays true to this day. So this is kind of interesting. I'm not used to this. I like the free wheel a bit more than holding the microphone. But if you can take anything away from this today, just think about memorials in your community and what they meant so much to so many people at that time and how they can do the same today just through creating connection. Find out who they are. Soldiers' lives are more than four years or two years in the military. It's their youth. It's their family. It's the community. It's business. It's school. It's connection. And if you can find anything to create that kind of memory for use in publications, documentaries, exhibits, oh, oh my damn way now, that's so important to do. Because then we know we'll always be